down in your bullets in the battle long. On this day, we honor those who labor here at home and around the globe. On this day, we honor Jesus and his gospel message of hope Christ brings. It is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Our scripture passage for today is Romans 1, 16 through 17. And I'll be reading it to you from the New International Version. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We join in prayer. Grace of God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be found acceptable in thy sight. You are our strength, our rock, and our redeemer, and we give our thanks and our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But I may known to someone here at the First United Methodist Church that we'd be taking some time to go through the book of Romans. I'm not going to tell you who she was, Terry. But I will say, oh, I'm sorry, did that come out? No, shoot. She looked at me and said, really? And I said, yep, we're going to try it. 16 chapters, right, and nine weeks is going to be a journey. Now, I probably should have picked up some easier, um, not Romans per se, one of the books of the New Testament that contain a lot of our New Testament themes.
any attempt as presumed, then is it something in which we should be shameful about? No, it's exactly the opposite. We are not ashamed because whenever we put any effort in God's word, it does return to us, not void, but fruitful. Prophet Isaiah promised that to us. So literally, as with most knowledge, what we put into it will determine the results. But I also believe in the life of our church, this is a really good time to put our focus and our attention for time back into God's plan. And on this Labor Day Sunday weekend, we acknowledge that this process will take some work. If we don't know, then we need to acknowledge that covering those 16 chapters in nine weeks will require some added workload for the both of us. My homework will be to put it all together and to keep it all together. And your homework will be simple. You get to fill in the cracks. Fill in the cracks of what we may miss when we come to worship. Now, to help us out each week in our message notes, you're going to notice that there are two sets of verses that are present. There will be the ones we're using, quote unquote, today. That's the Romans 1, 16 and 17 verses you heard read. But there's also the verses we're going to be covering, which is the rest of chapter 1. Do you hear where your homework is? After the message, which we kill your invitation in whatever way the Spirit leads you to do so, to read the extra covering verses along with your devotions and study for that week. And then send any questions that you have along my way or comments. It will be worth it. For instance, like I said, you get to cover the rest of Romans 1 this week. But again, we're just starting on those two. Which leads us back into those first two, right into chapter one of Romans and why we are not ashamed. The good news message is a simple one. Before Christ, we struggled. We believed and confessed in Jesus Christ and were saved. And now our lives have been forever changed as we love God and love one another. This is the good news. This is our beginning. However our story makes that happen, it is valid. But beyond that good news is the work of the church. The book of Acts speaks to what the church did after the resurrection. The work of the church to love God, love others, and to serve continues. And we continue only because we have Christ as our Savior. We continue only because we have the Holy Spirit to not only help us, but to help us help others. The revelation, then, of Jesus Christ may sound lofty, but it's nothing more than Jesus revealing himself through God. And the saving grace of Jesus Christ may sound like a huge theological term, but it's nothing more than God's love for all of his creation. This is not something to be ashamed of. It's something we don't have to be ashamed of. In fact, we're excited to share it. It is the power of God for our salvation. Psalm 95, 6 says it well. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture, his flock, under his care. We are not ashamed. 
of God's grace. We are not ashamed of God's love for us. But this is also probably a good moment for some true confession. If we're being honest, we know that there are times when we haven't been as vocal about our faith as we could be or maybe should be. Do our family and friends, neighbors, co-workers know us as people of faith? Where have we been ashamed in the past? Answering that question will give us a great recipe on where to start and what to do next. And if you do the homework this week, in Romans 1, 18 through 32, which are the verses following today's, you will read what happens to a society that chooses to turn away from God's blessings for them. Paul is writing this as a warning to us Christians and a warning to the world that although we have the power to retain God's knowledge, it remains our choice to accept that knowledge or deny it. Verse 21 and 22 warn us clearly. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor were gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. I don't want to be a fool. But God doesn't want to lead us there either. Please know that wherever we're at, if we're in a moment of being ashamed or just off track where it happened in the past, all of these times can be forgiven. But here's the crucial part we have to remember. When we talk about sin and its nature in our lives, when we hurt our witness, we hurt our witness. Forgiveness comes and is available to us, but sin and its consequences, as is very clear in Romans 1, always remain. Since we are not ashamed, then, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we will ask for forgiveness and attempt to reconcile our faith to others when those things need to happen. And for those who choose to not accept the gospel, that is between God and them. Thankfully, if we do, God in his mercy and grace will not hold our sins against us. Which leaves us then with that brain question, right? How can we then move forward Wanting to be less ashamed and in the power and grace of God, what are some tools that will help? Well, biblically, I think we have at least three options. First, get closer to God. Second, don't just defend the gospel, but live it. And third, we need to get a change of perspective sometimes. Let me touch on these. First, what do I mean by getting closer to God? Well, for Wesley, this meant using those means of grace to get closer to God in the time that we literally spend. We read God's word, and we let it speak to us. We pray, not only so that God will hear us, but so we will also be able to hear God. We worship, coming even on Labor Day Sunday weekend, right? To give God praise and thanks and let the Spirit work and fill us. We especially share Holy Communion, like next week, and baptism in the future, in community. And as community, we get closer to God in that process. We give generously, cheerfully, excitedly, with all of our resources, so that God's will may happen in and through what God first gave to us. 
to participate in the small groups and church ministries so people can see those crazy Christians where God is at work in his people's lives, including our own. If we want to be less ashamed, we need to get closer to God. And I've also come to understand that instead of just defending the gospel, we also need to live out the power of God. Again, Romans 1.17 says, It is the righteous who live by faith. By what? Faith. Glad you're with me. Thank you. Romans 5, 5 even says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And we don't have to sit back and defend the gospel. In fact, to be honest with you, the Holy Spirit can defend its own gospel. We don't probably need to get involved in that. Our job, our job, is to live out that gospel in our lives. If we want to be less ashamed, we need to live out our hope. We need to live out our faith. And we especially need to live out God's love. And then last but not least, in this day and especially age, sometimes we just need a change of perspective. New, fresh starts, like we are trying to experience, continue when we decide to give up the fame and the status and the rat race of this world in exchange for God's holy, eternal, majestic status laid out for us in the next. I can put up with just about anything here because I know I'm heading there. Amen? So if you want to be less ashamed, I mean, isn't that what we want for everyone? Our present reality is nothing compared to God's future promises. If we need to, change your perspective. And all of this is just in chapter 1. We've got 15 chapters to go, folks. So we are not ashamed because of the revelation and saving grace of Jesus Christ. We are not ashamed because even if we fail, God's sin, God's forgiveness remains over our sin. We are not ashamed. Because we're going to get closer to God by getting back to those basics. Doing that God relationship building work. Living out the power of God. Not just defending it. And of course, wherever and whenever we need it, change that perspective into God's perspective for us. And then, we will get back to it. And we'll have the opportunity to do it together. We are not ashamed. We have the gospel. And it is the power of God to salvation. And that's enough. We join in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. May your Holy Spirit give us opportunities. Those opportunities to show that we are not ashamed of you. That we are not ashamed of your gospel that we are indeed followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen.